We're running behind. All right. We're going to call this meeting to order. Roll call. Councillor Lehman. Here. Councillor Marcus. Here. Councillor Larson. Councillor Keithley. Mayor Swanson. Here. Reports from department heads. No public works. I got the uh, Trent has the the tranny on the dump truck is no good. So they need uh, labor at Northland over there is thirty four hundred. The parts is fifty five hundred, but about eighty nine hundred dollars to get her plow truck, dump truck back in business. So I think we we got to do it. Did we get another estimate? Are we supposed to get two? Well. Are we supposed to? Well, usually you try to get two just to get comparative. Yeah. Well, one's is parts. We're buying the parts, and the other one is labor is thirty four hundred bucks. But it's a, it's a total amount that you look at, I think, isn't it? We need to have to have two quotes. It's the same vendor. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> uh, try to get another estimate. Yeah, I think we need to get another estimate, John. Yeah, I'd like to get them, but we should have two. To do any work on these on our equipment, this five thousand dollars is not a good number. It's not that it's not a good number. It's uh, what it's the our city law requests. Time. Huh? It's what the law requests. You should get at least two. Well, is two that city estimates. of Buell or is that Minnesota? Minnesota. No. Oh. So by our next meeting, if we could have a second quote, yeah. then yeah, it wasn't even a word. Okay. Hopefully, there'll be no snow by then. Right. It'll be right away in October, so hopefully we can get that taken care of. Was there anything else, John? No, that's uh, just what Trent gave me on. Okay. Very cool. Get that. Fire and ambulance. You got anything for us? No. Engineering. Agenda. Okay. Attorney. Just on the agenda, Mayor. Okay. Long range planning and zoning? Uh, planning and zoning is going to have a meeting, our public hearing on Thursday, September 28th at 4 o'clock about Josh Gundy uh, for a request to rezone properties, the property next to Billy's Bar right. from a C1 to an R1. And our next regular meeting will be October 10th at 4 o'clock. So. Okay. Recreation board. And we canceled our September meeting because we didn't have enough people. Okay. So we'll be we'll be posting another meeting sometime. Okay. Library board meets on Thursday. Beta end of the month. Utility committee. Sheriff's report. Do we oh, have utilities. One? We're going to meet uh, Monday. No, it's yes. not. Huh? Monday, you're going to meet about what, John? Well, just see uh, with John trying to get the scope of what what our direction is for trying to get funds for next year and stuff. So, utility is board the meeting Monday at ten o'clock, which is twenty six, twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Uh, there's nothing from the sheriff's for this month. Okay, clerk's report. Um, we just we had the boiler inspection at the school. There was everything looks good. There was just a, a hose that needs to be replaced, just a minor repair. Um, besides that, um, I had an add to the agenda for the sheriff's car. Right. That was it. Okay. Council addition to the agenda, we have that law enforcement vehicle that Gen 1 is, is ready to have us put an ad out for. And uh, the KC bingo license. Anything else? No. Citizens Forum? Darcy, this is your opportunity to speak to us if you would. Sure. Okay. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity, I guess, for our company. Um, 
Oh, you have. Okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity for our company to be able to represent the city of Buell. Um, as I had mentioned before in my letter, my mother is a Buell graduate, and she would be honored by the fact that we're getting the opportunity to. Um, we are in the process right now of creating a commercial division for Keller Williams for Northern Minnesota. We really don't have any real estate companies up in Northern Minnesota that handle specifically commercial properties and so that's um, we have somebody going through training right now to be able to handle those um, at a more at an equitable national level because you know what we offer you know smaller communities we just can't really compete we're used to the mom and pop outfits where we have to be jack of all trades um, so hopefully that'll bring some value to the city too um, I think the biggest thing for the city is really trying to get a tax base and jobs and I think if you can get an entity into town that can bring either one of those two things, I guess my personal advice to everyone would be is to be as flexible as possible on price as long as you're getting tax base and uh, job opportunities for the community. Um, and that if, with permission, that would be a great advertising tool for us too, to be able to utilize. And then as far as the docs go, whatever your attorney wants to grab in there and throw his own verbiage in there, I know they like to tweak them up and we're totally okay with that. So you do okay. your thing. So that's all I got. Any questions? Are we, are we, is there any priority for us or we're just, what do you mean? Just go through the system? I mean, yeah, basically, just, we got to get the paperwork done and then we have to get a marketing package put together. So mm -hmm. that's going to take a little bit of time because we're going to have to get some footage um, and some pictures and try to get some virtual tours and hopefully before snow flies try to get some um, drone photography too of the outside of the building and um, and then basically just putting together a marketing package and throwing it out there and then we pray a lot mm -hmm. so. uh, Craig but brought up about the potential buyer would be not just to buy the building and take everything out of it and leave it empty I mean there would be stipulations that Yep. You have to <laughs> right. do, do what you say I, you're going to do. I think I put on the last page of the listing contract, too, and that's the way we would actually advertise <laughs> this to other agents, is that all contracts are going to be negotiated by the, by the representatives of the city um, and to make sure that the city is protected, make sure nobody's going in there and stripping it. And obviously, it's going to be case-by-case -case scenario. I mean, you get somebody who offers you a big chunk of change for that building, my assumption is you're going to let them do whatever they want. On the other hand, if they're bringing a tax base or whatever, you want a security blank to make sure they're not wrecking that building for future users right. and for the city themselves, because there's a lot of historic value there, too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of pride, hometown pride. Yeah. And your fee here was if... Yeah, a typical commercial contract is between 8 and 12% on a listing contract. Um, we're doing a flat fee of $7,000 and we'll write in the exemption for the parties that you're already working for. Most of that $7,000 is going to go to the buyer side agent. Um, we're really just keeping enough to make sure that we're cutting our, co covering our costs for marketing and for photography. Um, and doing that specifically because you're a municipality and it's hard enough, I'll tell you, to keep one uh, home full of people happy, much less a whole city. Yeah. So. Yeah, but we'll that's do our best. contingent that it sells. We don't have Correct. to. Okay. We don't sell it. You don't owe us anything. Um. That's something else too. But it's. <laughs> what happens if somebody on the protected list wants to buy it? Um, that's fine. I think we wrote in like a ninety-day clause in there. So as long as like they are put some kind of efforts forward in that time, you know, we're we're fine with that. I'm for the city. So this isn't about this isn't about a paycheck for us. This isn't about you know, um, this is this is about jobs for our whole area. So we are more than happy and willing and able to work out whatever we have to. So you said that at the end of the year, your person would be ready to go. So basically, you're talking January one to whenever the city is ready. Oh. you know, we'll need probably a good month to make sure that we get all our marketing materials in order. Okay. So, and you'll be stuck with me until our commercial guy kind of steps into the role. So, and he's going to be understanding the fact that this is really kind of a pro, more of a pro bono thing. He's not really going to get a lot of compensation on his end for doing it, but he'll be fine with that. Well, just reason being is the 90 days we're talking about start November. Whenever the contract is signed. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. And we can negotiate on that too. You guys want to move it back? I, well, I mean, just we have 
I think just one person moving. out there that we know of yeah. that may be interested that's yeah. dealt with us. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. We're flexible. Okay. So. All right. That sounds great. Any other questions? Thank you for coming, Darcy. It was nice to see and you again. And my most important meeting of the day, which is my daughter's ball game, so i got to go. All Thank right. You. We'll see you. Yeah. Anybody else for Citizens Forum? Gary, you going to talk to us tonight? Okay. Consent agenda minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the regular minutes of September 5th. I'll support. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Claims? I'll make a motion that we uh, pay the claims of $104,722.83. I'll support that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We'll move on to the resolution accepting donations. This is for the disc golf course. A resolution accepting the donations, resolution 1724. I don't know if I need to read off who they're, but they've got some listed here. They've got more people already who have, who are coming on board to also be a part of it. So. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the resolution 17 24. I'll support. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Preliminary uh, tab. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, roll call. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Larson? Councilor Keekley? Mayor Swanson? Yes. Uh, just on that, just the people that did support and donate to the clause was uh, Perella Associates, Rage Sports. Bacham Indust Industries are incorporated, Kurt and Sherry Swanson, Sportsman's, and Hideaway. And like I said, they've got others who've committed. Those are just, as the funds are coming in, they're getting them to me so well, I can just return them the to the audience you. knows just okay. <laughs> who's there. Who's donating? Okay. All right. Preliminary property tax levy. We need to set a preliminary tax levy date by... <coughs> property tax levied by September 30th? The preliminary has to be sent to the county. Okay. So we have resolution 1725, a resolution to adopt the proposed budget and tax levy for fiscal year payable 2018. Total levy would be $350,000. Is this comfortable level when everything's dotted and crossed, the T's are crossed? Not everything, that's why it's a preliminary one. <laughs> oh, but I mean... But we always aim high so we can come yeah, down. Yeah. That's the maximum yeah. goal. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I so move that we adopt resolution 1725. And I'll support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Can I have the roll call? Councilor Lehman? Yes. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Larson? Councilor Keekley? Mayor Swanson? Yes. All right, Bonnie, you finally get to get up and talk to us. We're going to talk a little bit about um, city facilities and properties and some of the new rules coming up. Did you say at the beginning of next year we have some new... Well, actually, um, and I just want to thank... Uh, Jen had emailed me last week to see if I could do a follow-up. After I came and did the audit presentation in June, we were going to schedule a meeting in July to follow up on a couple of uh, management points that came out. And one of them that we had talked about um, in the management letter that was issued for the last fiscal year was that um, the city has several facilities that you um, have various parties either using or renting. And um, when we're doing our inquiries, oftentimes I think these agreements have been long-standing, maybe some of them um, verbal and uh, not in writing. So the recommendation that we were making to the council at that point 
was to go through all the, uh, try to identify all the properties that the city um, currently has and are they being maintained and run by the city or do you have an outside group running them? And particularly those that have outside groups kind of running them or managing them after you've identified it is really recommending that you work with your attorney um, and the groups to get those agreements in writing. By outside groups, Bonnie, do you mean people outside of our city or residents of our city who aren't involved in local politics or right. government? Right. It would be that that isn't maintained by city personnel okay. or run by city personnel. So, for instance, you have the library, which is maintained by city personnel and, and run it, but you might have other um, groups that are running. There's, um, you know, just to name a few, there's Lake Leander, uh, you've got the, some people out there, you've got the community center, um, curling clubs, those type of things. So it would be working with those groups. In the past, we've had audit questions when there's been certain costs incurred as far as who's responsible for it and, and how does it go through. And it really comes back to having those written lease or facility usage agreements with those parties. Okay. Once they're identified, is to get agreements together and say, is it an annual agreement? Is it something that's going to be five years? 99 years, however it is. Um, and it, more importantly, some of the questions we were asking is, um, you know, who schedules the usage of those facilities? Um, once they're scheduled, are the rental fees um, maintained or kept by those groups, or does it come back to the city? And all of that comes back to what's your written agreement with those groups. Um, is there a right and wrong with that? There's no right or wrong. It's okay. whatever is written. Okay. And a lot of this comes from the recommendation is to prevent some misunderstandings that could come out of, um, especially when we're talking capital improvements or repairs and maintenance. Who's responsible? Is it the city's responsibility to do some repairs and maintenance for another group? One of the things that sometimes pops into other governments that we work with, too, especially with facility use agreements, is making sure that council is clear as far as you know what fees do you charge and when can you waive those fees. Um, oftentimes, if you waive those fees, you have to be careful you're not giving a donation. So if you're doing those, you have to uh, maintain that is there a public purpose to it and document that. Um, so a lot of times when you're setting up these facility use agreements, <coughs> you're not charging any fees mm -hmm. to that. You know, does it meet a public purpose? Is it for recreation? Is it for for the public as a whole? Those type of things. Um, the other thing is looking at capital improvements, making sure um, when we were on site that we had some general inquiries when there was some disbursements being made. You know, is this a capital improvement of the city? Is this shared by this other group? Is it half and half? Who owns that mm -hmm. improvement? You know, if, if this group would leave or exit from that, are those improvements theirs to take with or are they owned by the city? And oftentimes that just comes back to what's in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's where we kept bumping up. A lot of these aren't written and there's not agreements there. Um, insurance coverages, you know, we've been touching on that a little bit for these facility uses. You mm -hmm. know, are the groups covering their own insurance? Do they have a certificate of liability insurance? with the city. Those are things to look at when you're looking at these, um, documenting these uh, arrangements with other groups. And then um, one of the other things that comes out is, you know, if you have an agreement with a group, they're using it, the revenue that they're generating from putting on, is that theirs to keep or does it come back to the city? Again, there's no right or wrong. It's just what is the agreement and what's the understanding between the parties. So it was just a touch basis. It came out when we were doing the audit in the management letter, and it was just a touch basis with the council to work with your attorney and all the parties for those identified properties and get get things in writing. Okay. Is there any specific questions? I, I you know, we tried to meet the end of July and had some scheduling problems on my end, so I apologize for that. That's but, okay. Um, just wanted to make sure that we did some follow up. That was one of the points that came out in the. Management. One thing that I remember you mentioning in the past, Bonnie, um, was about our city hall staff and oversight for them because you usually say in your management letter because we have such a small staff that oversight is very important. Mm -hmm. Is that oversight the duty of the council to oversee like the pay and the hours work 
the time cards, those sorts of things for our city employees at City Hall? Um, I, what, what we always talk about, because you have what we call the significant deficiency with the lack of segregation of duties with what's going on there. Right. So we certainly always say it is the, the responsibility of the council mm -hmm. to provide appropriate oversight. You know, that degree of oversight depends upon risk assessed and things like that, but ultimately it does come back to the to the council to provide uh, reasonable oversight to, okay. to do it. It's still your what, responsibility. I mean, uh, the Leander thing is, I mean, we spend a hundred some thousand dollars to buy it. Mm -hmm. We have no control of anybody that taxpayer from Buell using it or scheduling it or doing anything with it. This is all about having a written agreement if we're going to move No, I know. Right. But I'm just yeah. asking her. Right. What's the question? Well, is this a good thing for... <laughs> well, I think it's an example of what, we, at what even we came across in the audit and not particularly just with that property but with others when we were asking and doing the inquiries mm -hmm. is what was the understanding and, and it really does come down to what was the written agreement and the responsibility. So for instance, you've got property out at the industrial park or Whiteside, you, or well, beat it does, but there's a rental, you have a rental, you charge right. them, they, you, you have an understanding, they run their business, they yep. keep their revenue, but they have certain responsibilities. So when you look at trying to have that sort of a written agreement with another group for your other facilities, that you have, you do own that property. I know, right? So, but it doesn't mean that you have to, that you have to have all the money that comes from that property, or you have to. Just what is the written agreement? And that's what we came up with the audit is that there are a lot of these properties that that's the way it's always been done. There's been a long-standing um, agreement. Um, but when, but when come push up. comes to shove, it's good to have a written document. Exactly, and so exactly. We'll put our attorney to because, work a little bit. Because that's one of the cases where you could say, you know, is it that party that's using it, do they get exclusive right to use that property well, during that, that period? Well, that and rent-free. You know, <laughs> and rent-free, that yeah. sort of thing. You have to work out again. The rent-free thing comes back, again. you have to meet as a council. Right. Public purpose and, and you know, right. is it open to things. So there's all kinds of things, and that's just one yeah. example, but you have several properties. So really the first recommendation would be just going through and identifying all your properties, you know, assessing this is really under the, the control and management, everything that the city does, or do you have some outside groups outside of the council or staff helping to manage and run it, and what's the understanding you know, for both maintenance, um, capital improvements all over. Right. I think that's that's probably the biggest part up there is that well, yeah, they always I mean, talk about their capital improvements, but we need the written understanding yeah. that Even that's in lieu the of rent. they pay rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know. and again, there's no right or wrong. Right. I mean, it doesn't mean that they have to be consistent across the board. You certainly can have specific agreements with different parties, but it's to get them in writing. Um, right. You know, I think the staff here sometimes when I ask, well, do you have that in writing? <laughs> you know, it's couldn't come up with some of those documents. From yeah, those well, I mean, there event. probably is then. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was really what we were coming out with the management um, letter is to really work on getting those agreements in writing and identified. Okay. It's also an official written document that counselors or, you know, change and you know what happened they might not know what the understanding was well yeah. if right. they change well here's the agreement that's in place then you've got something to look at well, other issues where uh where there's shared use uh, somebody buys tables and then they say well there are tables they're not city of buell tables mm -hmm. why are you shipping our tables out to that thing you know we don't want them getting wrecked and then you know for insurance purposes where something were to burn it's not city of Buell. If they don't own it, they don't get reimbursement for it. So a lot of times you do inventory. Okay, if that's yours, that's yours. You better have like renter's insurance in case something happens to cover you. And that's what you're yes, talking about. Absolutely is right. right. It's really to protect you know, everybody. This, everybody. Yeah. You know, I'm here talking to the council and the city of Buell's interest, but it really is on the interest for those other parties to as well. protect both clearly to find out, you know, what is the agreement. 
you know, we come at the audit time and see a, you know, a disbursement and where, you know, is this capital, you know, and, you know, the city might pay part and this other group might pay part and, well, then do you own half the asset? What happens if, you know, that <coughs> group leaves that facility? Uh, do they expect to be compensated for that other half? Do they think they're going to take that other half with? Does the city going to? Those are some of the questions that can come up without legal, without these written documents, right? No, oh, is there like these boilerplate uh, documents out there? Well, there's all kinds of facility use agreements. You just tweak them as to, you know, they're different for each party, so you just kind of get the terms and incorporate in there by, you know, either to pass what the understanding was between the parties, or you sit down with the parties and. You know, let's go through this so we get it it's fair to both sides. Right. I think it's a project that um, <clears throat> is a joint project between the city and the, the people who and groups that are currently using all of that to find out what has been your understanding, what works for you, what works for the city, and <coughs> kind of come up with, with that written document. That's very good. Good information. Thank you for coming, Bonnie. Yeah. All right, <coughs> Trailer Court, Water Main, Grant Street, Alley. John, is there any reason why we don't want to hold off on this if our monies are good from the DBG <coughs> till the end of next year? Well, it this? sounds like next few days we're supposed to get the contract in. Is yeah, that? I went to the meeting the other day and. Um, what it, meeting? A CDBG, CDBG. just a, the standard HUD meeting that they have every year. Um, and it sounded like they're for sure the money's there. It's just a matter of when it's going to come. I'd like to be informed of those meetings. I typically go to the oh, CDBG I I saw meetings. Email on the, on the list. I don't recall seeing anything on that. So in the next few days, what do they expect to have happen? They're hoping that HUD is going to sign those contracts in the next. Is going to sign the county's contract, and then they will sign the city's contract. But we. But. They don't think it's a matter of if we're going to get the money, but they just don't know when. I might suggest that we go over the project. Let's start with the water and sewer up by the park, and then over time to see if we can do the one up by the water tank. Yeah. A couple of meetings ago, the council did approve just doing the water line in the yeah. alley and then the water line by the Grand right. Street Alley. Yeah. So, if the money came through, but it's even if we had to go to the bank for a few months, you know, you take out seventy thousand dollars and you pay interest for a few months. We did that at the Sirid, and when the money came in, we paid off the loan and it cost a couple bucks, but we had the project done. Well, that was a Mercury project, actually. I'd rather make it contingent on the money coming in. Well, then we're not going to get well, it. It's going to cost us Joey, more. Joey needs to know yeah. tomorrow if he's going to do it or not. Yeah, because he's Otherwise, got to order a pipe. He actually just called John today when I was yeah. with him and said but, he's uh, going to have to move on. How much was that total project, John? Well, it was right around 100 and, 101 or 102,000. Well, all the whole project was like 145 ish. Yeah, but the city awarded just those two parts. Yeah. And the CDBG monies that we were granted was 70, right? Yep. So we were looking at having to pay like 31. Something like that, yep. Yeah. But if that money doesn't come through, you feel confident that it's coming through, John? Steve and Mike sounded confident. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of communities have started their projects already. I think you and a couple other are just, they haven't. And, you know, just the money is really, majority of the project being funded in Buell is with the CDBG. Right. Money. So really, we're waiting for the contract from the county, and that'll be the final. And and you're confident right, that'll come it through. Why is taking so long? I mean, it seems like every year it gets 
worse, you know. It was, yeah. uh, you know, basically all costs that have been incurred since May 1st are eligible for reimbursement, so, you know. It's so just, it's just, a, it's money that starts at the federal level and it just takes some time to get here. <laughs> but you're confident it'll I, get I here? I think it's, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to be here. We don't have the money in the capital. Uh, well, we, to do it. Uh, we do, we but do it drains us. But all right, but like I said, we awarded the the water parts on the both sections, and I would at least do the minimum of that. Yeah, we have to wait till next year. That's going to cost us more money. In. Well, that's right. Well, that's I what they always say. Already, so. I think we should go with it and, you know, Mike Vidbar said that you guys should be getting your money. I make a motion that we uh, award the project, I guess. To approve the project? Approve the project or whatever. Uh, I gotta support that. Just sure. the two water lines? Is that one? Yeah. What is it, Mike? Well, no, they just identify, you said the project, just so we're clear on the record, is the two water lines. Two water it's lines. a better description. Wasn't that a motion that was made at a past meeting contingent on this money That's coming through? I mean, yes. we're going to ask Joey for the 30-day extension beyond the extension that we already asked. Right. Probably just remove the contingency of the prior motion. It's not contingent anymore that you're going to go ahead without. Without knowing for sure we're going to get the money. Well, that's why I would go to the park and complete that alley. In the meantime, you have time for, because that's about $40,000, the other project, the water tank one. So if we did this, and then we completely, he wouldn't be pulling it and taking out, we'd finish that project, and if time and money, you know, would allow us to go to the other project. Well, instead of going from water to water, going from here to there, and you're tearing up that alley, and you're tearing up that alley, let's tear up this alley, do the water, do the sewer. It's going to be more time probably for him. For what? To keep it separate projects, kind of. I don't know. That's up to him. No, this, I think. So. I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I liked our motion that it was contingent on knowing that money was coming through. I mean, that's a lot of money for the city to have to put out if, if it doesn't come through. Well, I think that's why CDBG had a meeting last week to say that we are going to get the money, we're just not here right now. The meeting was just the, it's just the same one they do every year required by HUD just to go through how the program works. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything specific. No. But they did mention there, like he did in the email, that they're, They've been assured that the HUD money is coming. It's just they won't sign any city contracts until HUD signs their contract. So what did you say we got to do? Well, just you've had the prior motion for the two projects, right? Right. It was contingent upon receiving the CDDG money that if you want to proceed with those two projects, you could remove a motion to remove the contingency. That means it's not contingent anymore, that you're going to go ahead uh, without actually having a signed contract with CBDG. I'm just really not comfortable with that. The people who made the motion have to listen it? What if they're not here? Yeah, are, you, are they here or not? I don't think so. It's going to cost us more money. Otherwise, just do a new motion remo removing the contingency uh, just to go ahead with it. Yeah, let's do that thing again.
We've got an empty building up the street. I'm just not comfortable removing that contingency at this point, and we may know in a couple of days. If that happens, great. They'll move ahead. If not, I'd really rather not. Well, we'll probably have to put it out on the bids again because I'm sure Joey's going to bid on other projects and he's not going to be able to come here. He's the one that bid on our project. So we'd have to put it out for bids and... Well, if we don't... Well, he gave us the 30-day extension, we right? Don't start. Well, that was July 1st. He called and <laughs> but said... But we asked for an extra. He called and said that he has to know because he has another job he wants to yeah. do. Yeah, if, he, if we so don't want him to get started... He said, he's, he yeah, said yeah, we're he's running yeah, into time sit. issues, that right. he's, with the weather, yes. he's not going to be able to finish if he doesn't start right, right now. So, that's so I, we're kind of on a catch-22. I was going to you know, make a motion to let him start the water lines, and hopefully we get the money, which is, yeah. say it's coming. So. Yeah, I agree. Because if we wait till Next year it's going to cost more money, and we've done all this work already, so. All what work? All the planning and stuff, I mean, it's... Well, yeah, the, well, the plans are the plans. The, the engineered plans will work whenever we use them. But if it's a matter of a couple of days to know for sure we're going to get the money, I'd just soon leave the contingency in. I mean, if they're not signing all the city contracts until they see that HUD contract signed, I I don't know why we would be more willing to put our necks out there. Well, I, I'm forward to go on with the project. Does that support Councillor Marcus of the, Mr. Councillor Lehman's motion? Yeah, I support okay. Stewie's motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. <clears throat> EMT classes. We have three EMRs who would like to go to class to become EMTs. Eric Johnson, Tanya Erickson, and Laura Peterson. The class is 1700 per person, paid out of the ambulance department. If they pass the EMT test, are active one year, 15% of calls, the state of Minnesota reimburses the city $600, which in turn is paid out to the EMT. So, can I have a motion to let these three go through the EMT training? On a win-win situation? I think so. Okay, I'll support that. Oh. <laughs> and Stuart, I... I'll ask the attorney, but I'm sure that you can vote on this because you don't personally benefit financially from it, so you don't have a conflict of interest with this, I don't believe. The American second, okay, Chief. Mm -hmm. The American second. Yeah. But yeah. we all three have to vote in favor right. of right. it to pass it. Oh, and we have if you're making a motion, I support your motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Martin Hughes school discussion, was that taken care of with Darcy? Darcy All right. So we'll go on to our last two agenda items. First we have the law enforcement vehicle. Jen says that's ready to go. And she's recommending that we put this ad out. Advertising that the car is for sale, closed bids to be up at City Hall. Friday, November 10th by 2 p.m. Is there going to be a minimum on them? Mm -hmm. I think you can well, reject them. Uh huh? Do we have to? Do we have? The we can refuse you? all bids if, yeah, if they're low. If, if they're all low, we okay. say we reject them. Try something else. But if we want, we can advertise stating this, the minimum bid would be whatever amount we think is a fair amount, so I we don't the waste time. Bottom blue book is about five grand. And according to a few people that have worked on it, it's it needs some work. Okay. So I'm just suggesting we lower the bid till twenty five hundred or three thousand. Well, we can reject them. Well, I'll reject any bids that we get. I'd put on a minimum bid. A minimum bid of twenty five hundred. 
that way, and we can still reject it at twenty five hundred, or can we not? Yeah, I just say. But do you put a minimum? Though? Well, if we put, put a minimum, can we minimum, reject? And then you're saying that that seems to be acceptable to yes. you. All right. Well, let's not put any amount in. Let's just put it out there and see what what I'll comes. I'll just make a motion that we have. Except. John, do they add for 2010 Dodge Charger? No, where are we going to put this ad? It'll go in the mis our official newspaper in the Sappy Daily. Okay. Maybe we're make sure we put it as, as is. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, we, do we put that on the no, end, though? I put it in there and sold as is. I got this yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I got the same yeah. one here. If it's, then it's plain as is, what you see is what you get. And then we can post it at mm -hmm. the local library, post office, and city hall. Do you love the sky vehicle? Uh, you know, don't, don't be sold don't as it. is, okay. um, and is a motion was made for, okay. no, for viewing. Just put it out there with with our legal paper, like a best offer type. No, they have to send a bid in. Yeah, they oh. have to send in a closed yeah. bid. Close bid. Okay. Usually they're sealed until the <coughs> council yeah. meeting. Okay. Are you supporting his? Yeah, I'll support. Motion. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. And uh, Casey's bingo license was handed to me Sunday after Mass. So <laughs> he's like, could you get this in? They want to have their annual turkey bingo in November. Not too many papers here. 18. Oh, I haven't asked them for two. Yeah. Easter and Thanksgiving. Well, that's a good way to go. Yeah. Not finding it now. Can I have a motion to accept? I make a motion to uh, accept the uh, Major Columbus Heaven Bingo at the Senior Center on November 18th, 2017, and March 24th of 2018. I'll support that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. Motion carried. Have a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Do we want to mention about the school about tomorrow? I didn't say it in the report, but about Missouri. Mm. Yeah, no. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll support. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. This meeting is adjourned.